Hey guys, I'm Bryn and I'm on the couch tonight. We've got Scuds, Dagger and Corey, two money bags over there. And we've got Kirsty as well, trying to control us all. So come join us tonight, let's kick it off. Welcome back to the kickoff for another week. Round 18 of Super Rugby. This is it, the final round before the playoffs. I can't believe we've made it here. And we've got some new recruits on the show as well. What do we reckon? How did Bryn do in his first introduction? <laughs> well, <laughs> the rehearsal was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a bit like, but he actually I thought that was a pre-record, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> was live, just so that you know at home. You did it very Fantastic. well. Fantastic. Congratulations, you've just played 50 matches mm. for the Crusaders in Super Rugby and you're on a bye week, that's why we get to have you yep. this week. And we've got a wee video of you when you score those tries and you always seem okay. to be very happy. Yeah, so maybe so you can talk us through your reactions. Just happy to, oh there we go, this is with braids. I don't know, I think I, um, my mum always told me when I was younger, just to smile, always smile when you score a try or anything like that. So, and again, I didn't score, I didn't, didn't score many tries now, but when I'm down at the Crusaders, I tend to score a few, so <laughs> it's quite good. And so why there's a big smile on my face. Why don't you start smiling like that to Shag and that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I'll smile for the rest of my life, mate. I'll smile for the rest of my life, so. Yeah. There hopefully it is. A few more, hopefully a few more kisses. There's a few hand celebrations going on at the Crusaders as well. You see them between Richie Moanga and Seba Reese on the weekend. Yep. Do you have this thing and what is it? No, I don't. No, not really. I don't have enough razor for that, eh? So me and Jack have just got a simple kind of, just the one like that. That's all we really have, so I have a bit of gossip with him through the, through the night. So There you go. Well, yeah. it's great to have you on the show. Yes. We've also got Nehe Milner Scudder, and it is awesome to have Nehe. you here as well. So welcome <laughs> to the show, Nehe. Now, yesterday you shared a bit of news on social media. You've got your arm in a sling. Can you give us a wee update on how everything is? Yeah, so I had, um, had surgery a couple of weeks ago. Pretty frustrating. Um, had some plans around wanting to finish off the Hurricanes and obviously try and push for, for the Black Jersey again, but... Um, obviously had a bit of a roller coaster run with injuries of late, but um, it is what it is and yeah, I'm happy to be out here tonight and um, just be sharing the message that, you know, we all go through stuff, but um, reaching out for support and finding ways to get through it, you know, is, is pretty important, so that's nah, choice. Are there certain things that you've done? Re reaching out's obviously one, but going through a tough time like this, yeah, what have you sort of done that you can help yeah, others with? Um, oh, meditation has probably been something I've um, Ooh, tried, nice. tried of late. I've got a lady down in Wellington who yeah, sort of helps me sort of zone out and just sort of be more, more aware of my thoughts and um, I guess that whole sort of consciousness. So, yeah, if, if you're keen to try that, I guess, yeah, that's sort of something that's been helpful for me. Nice, nice awesome. bro. Thanks so much for sharing the message and also it's great to have you on the show. Now, not sure if you've seen the latest social media challenge going around, but Jordan Tafua from the Crusaders, <laughs> he's a bit of a dancer, a bit of a joker. Here he is. It's the Get Up Challenge. Oh, man. Now, cool down. Does he do this around training? I'm just interested. Is he, Brent? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, he does yeah. it around training. So this is what he's like. He's a character. He's on the um, music committee, so he's all about getting the music, blasting for the lads, and. Oh, Most it. of the Crusader but, um, boys dress like hillbillies anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's a cup of tea, because if you were in their hat, you know, you're going to have to be a bit yeah. on it. If you oh, haven't yeah. seen the kickoff after dark, which is what we do after the show, take a, keep an eye out on social media, because these guys, they're going to be giving it a go on social <laughs> afterwards. And Bryn, I reckon you should keep an eye out for him. Fantastic. Because he's going to do it well. Can't wait. Cheers, OK, time now for your weekend. It is a bumper weekend. Round 18, of course, the one before the quarterfinal. Finals. Four teams are locked in. Eight teams are playing for the final four spots. Here's the New Zealand games. The Highlanders taking on the Waratahs tomorrow night, followed by the Chiefs against the Rebels in Melbourne. And then we go to Saturday. It's the Blues taking on the Hurricanes in the mm. only New Zealand derby. And the other games around the grounds, well, they were all worth something this weekend. The Haguanis taking on the Sunwolves, the Stormers against the Shark, and the Bulls against the Lions. Mm. All of these teams, they want to win, and they want to win with bonus points as well. Here's our big game, though, and it is the Highlanders taking on the Waratahs. It was a bit of a lucky dip who our big game was this weekend because there are a few. These guys, they need to win. They need to win with a bonus point and make sure other results go their way. It's not the first time that they've been in Invercargill, yep. though. The last time they were in Invercargill against the Waratahs was 2010, and you were playing for the Highlanders. Yep, I was playing oh, that yeah. game. So they got to take a little bit of confidence out of that. Last time they played there against the Waratahs, they won that game. Um, yeah, I was playing in that game. I was 21 years old, and it was terrible weather. It was um, hoovering down with rain, and, and we got the win, and 
It was like we won the comp, to be honest. That was our first one of the year, so we <laughs> celebrated hard. But, um, yeah, they'll be taking confidence. And, obviously, the Waratahs are missing a few key players. So. That's the thing. So the Waratahs are missing a ton of their Wallabies for this game. Let's take a look at the team list. In the forwards, well, it's really a farewell for a number of the Highlanders' forwards. You've got Hemapur, you've got Squire, Lomax. These guys are all going mm. next year. So what does this do for them? Motivation? Yeah, yeah, I think it motivates them to want to play well for their last home game in front of their home fans. You've got Squire, who played 60-odd minutes last week. He'll take a lot of confidence out of that. And then Hemapur, he's, you know, a stalwart on that team. And then you've got... Um, Coltman, he's playing his 100th game, so, yeah, great play. Yeah, we'll nice talk point. about him a little bit later on. No Ben Smith in the banks. Josh Mackay is in there. <coughs> Could be the last game down south for Waisaki and Holo. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to play with Waisaki when he was at the Blues 2013, and, you know, obviously he's gone on to have a great career. Um, again, it's going to be a great night for him, and you know, hopefully the Highlander boys can, can, get, can get a win for him. And again, coming back to Dagger's point around Liam Coltman and a lot of those boys leaving, so hopefully they can end on a good note. On the bench, very odd, Elliot Dixon's in jersey 23. You wouldn't normally see a forward in 23, <laughs> would you? What's going on there? Put a res on the back. Maybe he thinks this is his last game. His favourite player is Jordan or LeBron James. <laughs> he thought, I want to go out with that jersey. I'm not too sure. Normally I it's a back. I've never thought of it like normally that, Normally it's a back. That's a weird tip for you. Well, no, yeah. last time I was there, it was terrible weather, so they might go for another loose forward and they had to find a number for Elliot and he's going to be on, on here later. So, yeah, he got 23. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's go on to our big matchup. It's a big matchup with a few smaller <laughs> players. We're talking about the halfbacks, two very experienced. Aaron Smith taking on Nick Phipps. You must enjoy the way Smith plays. Mustn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Be on this. Be on this. The whole time through during the show, they told me to bag Nuggy. But no, look, he's... Um, <laughs> you said you wanted he's, uh, to. He's come back what are you talking about? He had a great game on the weekend, and look, their, um, their team plays a, a great tempo with him. So it's actually going to be interesting to see how they're going in the cargo. So it'll probably be wet and damp, and the kicking game of Nuggy will probably be a bit um, at the forefront. And then Nick Phipps, um, you know, great competitor. I've played him a couple of times, and I think for him as well, more so it's based around tempo. I think Nuggy has a great running game and kicking game, whereas Phipps is more around tempo and just a bit of a competitor, so it's going to be a great matchup and look forward to seeing it. If we look at the stats, well, the stats are fairly stacked in Aaron Smith's favour, other mm. than the tackle percentage and the tries. <laughs> Nine try assists, though, for Aaron Smith and a lot of defenders beaten this year. But you guys always talk about his defence and you're always joking around <laughs> with him. Oh, I can, because I was terrible at it, so... <laughs> 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 it's easy to come from me, but nah, Nuggy, he's, yeah, he's got great feet, he can step off both feet. Um, he always looks for those little snipes around, around the rucks. And here, you've played with him a few times. Mm. What do you reckon says, you know... Yeah, like you mentioned, and looking at his stats, um, obviously, like his footwork and with some of those big fours, he tries to bring them into the game, but he spots those opportunities when they pop up and um, I guess, like, trying to get that tempo forward to get those backs to the ball, uh, that's pretty crucial. And, yeah, I think if, yeah, perfect Invercargill conditions they need uh, tomorrow <laughs> night, yeah, hopefully he can um, have another crack. Well, let's talk about the conditions. Let's actually go to Invercargill. We're <laughs> nice and warm and rugged up on the couch, but let's find out what it's like down there. Mills Muliaina, he's gone on tour. The kickoff didn't get to, but you're there with Elliot Dixon. Welcome to the show. What is it like down there? Oh, thanks, Kirsty. And it's great. It's been a fantastic day here in Invercargill. Sun's shining. We're nice and warm. And you can't come, not come to Invercargill and have not have bluff oysters, and that's what I've done. I've sacrificed my share, because this guy says his testosterone levels are way down. I'm getting a little bit worried now, because he's... Uh, hey, old mate's getting a little bit rowdy now, so... But, hey, how's, how's the week been, bro? Been all good? No, it's been awesome, bro. I'm um, glad that you mentioned that I've done six of these already. I'll, I might as well get on to my seventh, but... Um, it's been a good week. Um, Coldy's week. This week, it was Bender's fortnight the last um, couple of weeks, so... Um, I think everyone wanted to give Bender a present. I'm pretty sure Spates gave him about three or four oh. presentations. So, no, it's been awesome to get get back down here and and get back um, back to grassroots with Inver's where it all started, I suppose. Well, I'm not going to ask you any more questions because I know they're itching <laughs> the bits to get at you. So I'm going to throw it back to you guys to, to ask him a few. So, yeah, Millsy, is he here, bro? Um, this is a question for both of you. He's obviously eating a lot of oysters. Do these boys get into, into any other delicacies? Do you... Do you go to the mutton birds or, or the old... <laughs> what else they got down there, man? Well, they've got mutton birds, which I've, I have had a taste of mutton birds since I've been down. They're good powers, mate. Mm. Easily easily accessible and massive. So Big there you fun. go. There's two, se two bit, of, bit of seed. What, what do you get into, bro? Kinner on toast, bro. Kinner on <laughs> toast. Yeah. yeah. Kinner on toast. <laughs> How's oh, the Millsy, Millsy, mate. Ah, no good, no good. <laughs> Millsy, Brent here, mate. I've just got, a, just got a question for you, mate. Obviously, you've been in a few environments. 
and obviously you're at the Chiefs, which is a Waikato draft, and you're obviously down in Invercargill, which is Spates country. If you had to choose, are you going to choose a Spates or are you going to choose your Waikato draft? Oh, mate. <laughs> Come on, hey. mate. Don't sit on the fence. I know you can sit, on the, sit, on, the sit on the fence when it comes to the Blues and the Chiefs, so it's time to be this, make a decision. I thought you were a, I, Brent, I thought you were a very clever man, and having been on that panel tonight, your looks just wa- outweigh everyone else that's on there, apart from Kirsty. But I'm going to have to say, tonight, tonight since I'm down in the cargo, it has to be a space. Yeah, okay? Beauty, there you go, mate. Beauty. All right there. Great clarity, mate. Fantastic. All right, lads, just a quick question. I just want to get back onto the oysters. Um, they're hard to get in Wellington because they're quite expensive. So what is the magic number, or what, how many can you go to before the repercussions start coming? You know what I mean? Repercussions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would know. Hey, well, hey, hey I, I said it before, mate. Old, old mate's getting a little bit rowdy, eh? Early, bro. <laughs> Who said that it was too uh, expensive? Who said it was too expensive? Well, that better not have been Izzy. Izzy, it's not expensive for you, but <laughs> I, reckon about, I reckon it's about 12, 13, and then probably you need to stop there, eh? Oh, nah, obviously. <laughs> so, we'll get... so no, just a serious question, uh, Elliot. Obviously, there's a few players leaving, brother. Um, is it getting pretty emotional for those guys and for the team? Or, you know, like we watched before, there's a few players that are leaving. So how's the week been? Yeah. Oh, no, it's been good. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a little bit emotional, but... Um, Probably won't realise it until after the game or after the season, um, depending on when that finishes. But um, as you said, you missed my oh, name next week, actually, in the, the intro. So, um, oh yeah, okay, next week. Um, <laughs> nah, but, um, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but sweet, I, I, won't, I won't go on that. But um, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been an awesome actually week, bro. It's been, it's been good to get down here on Wednesday. I uh, spent an extra day down in, uh, in the cargo. Get to see nice the community, uh, get a few bluffies down there, and uh, get back into the work. Nice, brother. All right, boys, just to finish it off, um, can you just finish your drinks? <laughs> Lilzy, put something to your lip. All right. Just let it sit there. Oh, oh, oh. Go on, man. Oh, Looks pretty warm, brother. Thanks, mate. Cheers, brother. <laughs> Cheers, brother. We'll wait yes. for you. Yeah. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so you only had a sip in there. Hey, thanks very much for joining us, guys, and all the best to Elliot for this weekend. Well, we're going to stick with the Highlanders, and it's the players to look out for this weekend. We can't go past the man himself, Liam Coltman, who's playing his 100th Super Rugby game this weekend. Big milestone. Huge. Huge. <laughs> it's huge in Super Rugby. I mean, for... To get to that, it means that you've been around for a while because it's a physical game, it's hard. Mm. Um, so to get to 100 is, is something special. Um, so he'll enjoy it. And if they win, he'll enjoy it even more. Mm. <laughs> well, here's uh, the virtual stance on his season so far. Pretty good uh, line-out success. 104 tackles, three tries. That is very good for a front rower and mm. 11 defenders mm. beaten. Yeah, he, like we said before, he, oh, it's been noted during the week, he's playing extremely well. He's, you know, his coach has come out and said he's probably the third-ranked top three in, in, the, in the country. So, yeah, he's got to take a lot of confidence from that. And, um, yeah, a big milestone for him as well. He's got two kids. Um, yeah, big moment for him and his family. Mm. There's a few guys here that played 100 games, so it must be, it's a pretty special moment, AC. You get that Ponamu. <laughs> get that one from Chewy. <laughs> Is that something, though, that players look forward to? I mean, they get to 50 games and then they think, maybe that's what I want to head to. I want to make the 100 mark before I finish mm. in Super Rugby. Yeah, obviously that's something that I've been looking forward to, but injuries have kind of cut that short. But, um, you know, it's always memorable when you see the boys have their um, celebrations and acknowledgements after the game, whether it's 50 or 100. So, yeah, yeah. big ups to the bro for yeah, achieving that this week. I think it makes it much special as well that it was with one club. Yeah. You know, um, a, lot of, a lot of players have obviously gone, done a couple of clubs. Like you. But, like me, you know, like me. <laughs> and but, me. Um, <laughs> but again, it's just it comes back to Dagger's point, you know, playing for one club and... You know, he's actually really grown his game as well from the player that he was that he, when he started to where he is now. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, with the comments that, you know, Aaron made through the week, you know, it's, we definitely well-deserved. Well, let's move on to the midfield because we've got all back, so it's a bit funny to be talking <laughs> about forwards. But Tay Walden and Rob Thompson, they have combined again in the midfield for just the sixth time this season. Probably. Far cry from what they played last year and they dominated. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, it's, it's good that they're back together. I mean, they played well last year together. This year, there's been a few injuries, so I guess there's been a lot of changes in that midfield, so get them back together and consistently. So down in Invercargill, where they're not going to get much ball because it's going to be raining and wet. <laughs> um, so it's going to be interesting, though. When you would play against <coughs> these guys, the Highlanders in the midfield, I mean, what would you talk about during the week, going up against these two? Uh, Bobby, like Robert Thompson, he's got good feet and he's a great offloader, so we'd just talk about him being 
the, probably the main ball carrier. And then Tay, he's a solid defender. Mm. He can defend pretty well. For, you know, he's only a small guy, but he's got a big heart, tackles well and, and does his thing. So, yeah, we, Bobby, the ball doesn't really get outside Bobby, so we know <laughs> if he gets the ball, he's going <laughs> to probably hit, tuck and go and yeah. do a few offloads. So, yeah, we can an an analyse him pretty well. He's but, quite big in, in person yeah. too, eh? Like, I didn't think how big he actually was. Mm. Until I and quick. Saw him. Mm. Yeah, he's quick he's, off the mark. Yeah. He's a large mm. human. Yeah, I think I'm going to find it pretty interesting to see how it's going to be, because obviously... Playing at Forsyth, it's going to be a nice drive check and execution, and obviously ball skills really easy it's under the roof. Different. Um, so it's going to be really inter interesting to see, you know, not only how the midfielders deal with it, but the whole team in general and in wet conditions, which will probably be in Invercargill. And they've already talked about that during the week. Obviously, a lot harder. Caketon, very hard place to mm. play. Invercargill, mm. another <laughs> tough place to play. Yeah, pretty similar in Invercargill and, um, and Wellington. But absolutely not. <laughs> uh, absolutely <laughs> not. It was <laughs> similar, <Wow. laughs> similar people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Coming from Palmy. Gee, <laughs> <goes. laughs> well. Yeah, OK, no, well, we're well, we going to move on to the unknown. <laughs> it is back this week. And the unknown, we can't go past the Waratahs. They are resting five of their Wallabies. Michael Hooper, Rob Simmons, Sakopi Kepu, Bernard Foley and Kurtley Beal. How do they go without these guys? Well, I think it's they need looking... They need a winner. They need a winner. They need a winner, but they probably don't yeah. think that they're going to, so they're looking to the future, potentially. So they're throwing this game when technically they can still make the playoffs. Yes, they need some good luck to go their way. Well, I think they probably count... You count on a few games during the regular season that they were going to win, and then they got to the last game and they have to rest them. There's no way you rest those big players in, in the last game. That's a must win without planning, you know. Yeah. That. So they would have planned to be able to be in the playoffs with the previous games, and got to this game, they had to. Surely like, they'll be. But those guys around, are in yeah. Sydney going like this, you know, Buddy Smugglers on yeah. the beach. <laughs> but like Bondi, yeah, as, yeah. as a as cargo a, yeah. staying in, on Bondi, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll stay at Bondi. It's amazing because we'll this one, you, obviously, you're a competitor and you've put through that much work through the preseason mm. and all that, and f to be able to throw a game or possibly, you know, yeah. not have your full strength side. I wouldn't be throwing a game because that's match fixing. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, sorry, not, for, but not their full, yeah, not their full strength team. Great chat, but we've got to move on now, and it's the final farewell for a number of players for the Highlanders. Over 13 players are heading offshore at the end of the season. Naholo, Smith, we're talking about Hemapore and Dixon. There's so many of them. And we've put together a wee tribute video. If you leave this is quite... Now, you'll take away the biggest part of me. Oh, Bucky thanks. That's tough. Kuda. And the Bucky. Fatties. It's a lot of them going. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a very How sad time. What was it? How many? Thirteen, 13. players. Salary cap will look nice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see the come out of retirement. Hobble around. Hobble on one Hobble leg, leg down. Chance here. <laughs> wow, I can't do that. But it's gonna be a young squad next year. Gonna be a young squad, but yeah. then another reason. I mean, when there's a goodbye tour for all of these guys, they're not gonna want to drop this last game. Nah, are nah. They? no way. No, no way. way. No. No yeah. way. Right, well, we tried it out last week. The red card is our new game for the first time. If you can red card anything in rugby, what would it be? Now, no pressure. Angus Tarval was on the show last week and he absolutely killed it. Man, of course, no he would a good About man from minutes. the Chiefs. <laughs> this week, we've got Bryn Hall to do our red card for us. So, Bryn, yep. what are you red carding? I'm red carding my uh, follow flatmate that used to be Jack Goodhue for his mullet. Yeah. Um, there's actually a real reason why he has his mullet at the moment. Um, as you can see in the viewing there, obviously, it's actually not too bad, you know, he's done pretty well for the fact that, you know, he's a big boy from, um, from Northland. But the real reason why he's running a mullet at the moment is that he's engaged, just newly engaged. <laughs> and um, he's got gauze, gauze mat pockets and uh, doesn't want to pay for his wedding. So he's actually looking for Women's <laughs> Day or Women's Weekly to try and get behind and pay for his wedding. So red card for being a Jew, Jack. So here you go, mate. And you, and you need here to get Women's Day, eh? Absolutely. Well, I've well, got, you got it. I've got it. So you've had a few covers on your toes, haven't you? You'll you'll think you'd help them out for the connection uh, and get them on there. But yeah, mate, red card that, uh, that, that mullet, eh? That's horrific. Oh, you reckon? Nelly, yeah, agree, red card? Yeah, yeah yes. Oh, I like so it. Good. I like his mullet. So what do you reckon? Are you white cutting it? What do you reckon? You just play on, on. Play, <laughs> on. <laughs> play on, play on, mate, play on. You reckon yeah. you guys should stop being mean? He's been on our show before, and we know that he doesn't like his mullet being dressed. <laughs> We're moving on though Love to you, the next game on Friday night. It's the Chiefs taking on the Rebels in Melbourne. The Rebels have only beaten the Chiefs once before. Both of these teams they need to win, ideally with a bonus point as well. And the Chiefs, I've got a big man back on their side, and it is Brody Retallick back for the first time from. From his wrist injury, he is going to wreak havoc, isn't he, Nehi? Yeah, obviously it's a massive um, 
this reintroduction for Guzler is always huge when he comes on, um, no matter what team he plays for. And I think just that sort of leadership that he brings as well uh, for their forward pack. Uh, yeah. who, um, he will be steaming in this game because <laughs> yeah. if they are out, he's on ice for a couple of years, isn't he? <laughs> well, that's Siege. <laughs> well, you got something for us, Siege? I thought that was what came out just recently. It's been a great week for him, really. <laughs> yeah, his pockets are full. And... <laughs> like, I'm just saying. Like, he'll come steaming into this game, I guarantee it. Yeah, nah, it's Well, great. it is the same week that he's re-signed with the Chiefs. No, he's not playing for the next two seasons. That's what but I mean. he's so... still in New Zealand rugby, which is good news. Yeah. 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 So he loves the Chiefs. Poor New Zealand rugby's a bit <laughs> broke now. <laughs> yeah. That's nah, great. He's still paying you. up a bit money since you're not on the books anyway. Oh, they're still paying him. They're still paying him. <laughs> no, no, no two more weeks. Paid, I'm done. He's <laughs> still getting paid, mate. Uh, that's great to see Gus back, eh? He's, he's a big part of the Chiefs in um, yeah. New Zealand rugby. And uh, yeah, he'll be fizzing. He's an angry man on that field, eh? And he mm. just does some freakish things. Mm. But, uh, yeah. yeah, he's a... He's a He's a good player. Well, a talkative man on the field all the time is Brad Weber. And who better to talk about Brad's form this year than Bryn? Great time having him. Now, look, he's been awesome this year. And I think. Oh, well. what, 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 I haven't seen you do one of those yet. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's, uh, he's been playing really, really well. And obviously, with Triple T in there as well, it's, uh, it's a competitive environment at the moment. And again, he's been playing really well. And no doubt he'll be wanting to have a good performance so they can play hopefully quarterfinals against us, possibly. And. A couple of weeks, so maybe next week. How tough is he to play against? He's great, great competitor. Yeah. Just loves being real niggly. And again, when it comes to halfbacks, we love ch uh, chatting and chipping away. So <laughs> That's a there'll be a fair, yeah. fair bit. Oh, you know Dagger, you know? You're, just, you know. you're different human, different breed, eh? When was the last time a halfback tackled a halfback? Never. That's a great question. If we do get a chance, though, like that. yeah, never. If we do get a chance, help, we love help. it. Help! <laughs> That's why I hear you the whole time, Chris. Yeah. When the ref's there, help! <laughs> 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 okay, well, these guys, so competitive, so we love tucking the games. And just to see if CJ's going to win or lose this week, purely that's entertainment enough. It's Guess the Lid, it's back for another edition. And this one is about the yuck cuts. We're talking about the baldies, the Justin Bieber kind of haircuts, the honey badger, they're all in here. <laughs> oh, it's a normal one. Yeah. It was a normal oh, one. Oh, man. The edges is pretty bad. Oh. Siege, honestly, don't cheat, bro. If you know it. I don't know it. You're ruined. I don't know. know he it, doesn't mate. know. Wow. Of course he's got to be in there. Yeah, the shockers. I don't know it. That's what we're talking about. Here it is. That's that's like yeah, the that's top two. He's got to a little, they talk yeah. about the he's top two inches. That's it. That's the clue. He's got a tough. Awful. He's Nehi, if you don't know tough. how this works, Nehi and Bryn, you've got to guess who this is within the next five seconds. We need a name. He's Glenn Jackson. Jackson. I can't even see it. We need Jackson. a name in the next five seconds. Glenn no, Jackson. Well, he wasn't, no, it's, it's too faded. Are they new? Could they be old? Jason Eaton. Nah, he's got too much hair. It's an international. Oh, international. It's an international player. Joe Mella. Joe Mella. Let's reveal. I've got Mella here. Joe Mella. Let's reveal. Mella. Isn't it? I don't know who it is. Oh, oh, I thought it was the side he of his head. I thought it was. I thought it was a front with a yeah. tuft. Nah, because yeah. then I looked again. So, I thought it doesn't look right. It looks like it's a. How do like you know? How do you know? How do you know? Because it's, it's written there. <laughs> <laughs> No one wants to play anymore. Nah. We're going to the Hurricanes. I was joking, they I saw that. <laughs> New Zealand Derby, Westpac Stadium on Saturday night. Dane Coles, he's back starting for the side for the first time in a long time at Westpac Stadium. Well, good he news. looked good. He looked Great good news. on the weekend. Yeah. He, he just hangs out on the wing and scores tries. Yeah, but it's, it, it's just his work around the field. Look at this. Freakish from a hooker. He's changed the game and. and Rugby, you know, you played it from Nihi. Yeah, you get to see him day in and day out. What's he like? Yeah, and it's awesome to see him back, first and foremost. Mm. Um, you know, he's been twirling away probably the last oh, close to a year, just riding away with injuries and whatnot. So, yeah, just to see him back out there doing what he does and that sort of sifting around on the edges. I think I Four tries in seven games. Yeah. For a front rower, like, that is unbelievable stats. Yeah. Probably better than some wingers these days. Oh, it's, it's pretty impressive. Like his strike rate. It's pretty impressive. And coming back to Dagger's point, he revolutionised the game for hookers. But the main thing that I'm thinking with Dane coming back, the leadership qualities that he brings as well, mm. the fact they're going to be playing finals fo footy, pressure moments, and having a guy like that, you can't really replace like that. So it's great to see him back. Hey, well, that is our show. It has gone so fast tonight. <laughs> Thank you guys for being on the show. Thank you so much, Nikki. All the best yeah. with your recovery. Thanks, Bryn. All the best for the final series. Thanks, I'm sure these guys are going to be along with you too. We'll see you next week.
welcome to the kickoff after dark for another week. This week we are dance as well. We're trying to be anyway. Following Bryn's lead, Jordan Taufoa inspired challenge. It's the Get Up Challenge. Let's go. You can do it. Slide to the left, slide to the right. Now cool down. Come on, you're fine. Oh, again. Oh, oh, this is moving. Best chance, but we get a red card. 8:30 p.m. Thursday nights. Join us then.